Now, you know what I said that I didn't need the dust collector and here's what's left of it sitting right there. I still have to get rid of it. But another thing that I really don't need is this big honking table saw sled that I made uh, about a year ago and I never I almost never use that. I only have it down now because I was actually cutting the slits in this homemade microphone. Now I normally keep it up on top of my chop saw station um, but eventually what I want to do is I want to put a cabinet up here to put other stuff in that's the same width as this because the grinder is going to go here and that will be standing up and I'll really need something beside it to hold it up out of the way. So then what I do is I wind up putting junk up there, junk that I actually need but should be put somewhere else. And then when I actually need to use this, I can't get it out because I have to take all that junk down. Stuff like that. What I want to do is I want to make a uh, like a boom arm for my new microphone. That's what I'm going to be doing today. I just finished making that microphone. The first time I used it was on the quick release vice, the new video that I made. And I just quickly made up this kind of a boom here. You can see the complicated mic holder right here. Green tape. Works great for that. I want to do what I want to do is improve upon this vastly and make something that, you know, be a little bit more reliable. Okay, so I'm not going to go crazy with it here. I'm just going to use reuse the same parts. This one I've just cut it shorter and kind of rounded the ends. Now I'm going to uh, straighten out this rough part here by just drawing a line straight across and then cut it on the bandsaw. Uh, there's one thing I've learned is that um, when you're doing something, you get an idea in your head. Yes, it's going to work, but how well is it going to work? It's better to take the minimum amount of time, get something made up that you can say, okay, well, this is the direction you need to be moving in. You know, this is the way you want it to be. But you know you can improve upon it or you might like it as it is and just take it and either use it as it is or or build a better version but this is the way it starts for me just rigging something up and then I can go from there the body of the mic is made out of wood and the front is actually a piece of this PVC pipe that I cut to length. But the body is the same diameter of this to make it, you know, look professional. So to make a clip, to make a holder for the mic, I'm going to use this larger size PVC and just cut it about an inch long and then cut a slot out of it so that the mic can slip right in. I'll take that to the bandsaw and cut the slot out. There you go. And then we can just check it to see how it works on the piece of pipe and clips on like that. Neat. Alright, so I've taken the clip and I've sanded it down a little bit to make it so that it won't, you know, mess up the beautiful paint job on my microphone. I've also taken a number 10 screw here. This is a pan head screw and I actually ground down the top of it a little bit. All I'm going to do is make a counter bore inside here for the head of the screw to fit in and then drill the rest of the way out with a 3 16 inch bit. <laughs> Make sure that that clears the screw. I'm just going to ream it out a little bit. And then take the screw and put it in. See, it still sticks out a little bit, but I think it's going to be just fine. So I've got the long part of the microphone boom. I'm just going to drill a 3 16 inch hole through this existing hole here. This is just a screw hole. That through like that. So I've trimmed that off, and now I'm just going to take the Holder, slip it through, slip the bolt through, 
put a washer on. It's a 3 16 inch washer and a 3 16 inch wing nut. This bolt is a little bit longer, but if I change the thickness of the boom, I, the, you know, the longer bolt will accommodate. Now what that allows me to do is put the mic in, say if it's from above, put the mic in like this and then I can adjust the angle so it's pointing down properly. That's the best way to mic is from above whenever possible. Now back to the drill press again at the other end of the short, you know, the lower boom part. And I'm going to drill a hole through the long one. It's going to let it cantilever out a little bit because I really don't think it needs to be that long and line it up with one underneath and drill a hole through it. Okay, so I'm trying to get the orientation of this right. I want it to be, you know, pretty much over the camera, so that'll be on that side, that side, or actually reverse like this. So here's that, and I got my another, you know, 10, 24 bolt to put through another washer. And that goes through this one as well. And then I got another washer. And this this bolt is actually a little bit short, but it'll do. <clears throat> so now that I'll be able to positively tighten that up so that the thing won't sag. And so that's it. I got it hooked up. I just uh, clipped in the microphone, as you can see. And the wire is wrapped around this longer boom. And I left enough slack here to, you know, lever that up and down. i got the green tape happening again for clips. And then it comes down. And I got a little microphone power supply here. And then plugs into the camera. And everything's hunky-dory. So I'll give you a little sample of what it sounds like. Well, if you watch the intro video, you already know what it sounds like. Uh, I use this microphone on the Jerry Rig Boom to do it. This one's working well. The microphone is... You can see where my hand is, it's just above that. Whenever possible, you want to get the microphone as close as you can to the person that's speaking mouth. That's the reason for the length of the boom. I actually would like to make it a bit longer, but that would be uh, the subject for a more detailed project. Now, I just want to take a second to talk about the acoustic treatment here in the workshop and how effective it is. You can hear the difference. It's amazing. It's actually nicer to work in here too. It uh, it almost feels warmer. You know, you got an echo and that kind of feels cold. So, you know, it has an impact on you when you're working even. So that turned out really well. I had a lot of comments in the video on it. You know, people making recommendations, even though, you know, at the end of the video, you could hear what a remarkable difference there was. People were still given recommendations about other things to use, which seems kind of odd to me because, you know, you say, okay, that works. Why would you do anything different? Basically, what you got to do is you got to look at how much, just exactly how much stuff I had to put in to make this effective. That's a lot of insulation above my head here and in up in the corners as well. It's a uh, total mass of uh, about a bundle, a full bundle of insulation up here above my head to absorb the sound. So you're not going to be able to do that with, you know, a lesser product like uh, a lot of people suggesting egg cartons. I don't, I think I tried that way back, you know, I've always been into audio type things and I think I tried the egg carton thing in a limited way uh, a long time ago when I was doing something else, but I don't think that's as effective. I can't rule it out 100%, but I do know that this here is 100% effective. And that coupled with the new mic, which was, uh, you know, cheap, I'll be actually doing a, a project video on this channel on that microphone and how I made it. I'm going to be making a new one a little bit more, you know, a little bit better looking. And, you know, it'll maybe help someone out there that wants to do this kind of stuff, but thinks that they got to go and spend 200 or 300 or 500. Some of these mics are like two or $3,000. And you know what? They don't make you sound 
any different than you actually are. You know, this mic is not going to make me sound like Morgan Freeman. So it can only make me sound as good as I sound in the room that it's in.